If one or both of your axles has failed and you're looking for a replacement set for your 05 or newer Tacoma, these front CV axle shafts will be a great set to take a look into. Now CV axles failing is actually pretty common, especially when adding a lift and throwing off your suspension angles, as well as just regular old wear and tear. Now the boot sometimes can end up rubbing and ripping, which will throw grease everywhere and allow debris to interfere with the joint itself, which can just damage it that much further. Now this set will be a great solution as an OE style replacement that will up the durability and longevity compared to your factory axles without breaking the bank for the Tacoma owner looking to daily drive or even off-road their truck. These will incorporate a heavy duty build with heat treated components, including the ball tracks, and is gonna come with stainless steel clamps for a long lifespan. The axles will also feature neoprene boots that will be more durable than the factory materials and include molly grease and a grease shield to reduce any premature wear. Not to mention, these will come with all new hardware for your axles so you don't have to worry or question about using any old components. Like I mentioned, these will be relatively affordable for a set of axles coming in at roughly $250. Now keep in mind that these are an OE style replacement, so other more expensive options in the category may be for higher performance application like length and setups. Not to mention, direct factory replacements from the dealer usually will cost you a little bit of extra cash, and these will be an OE style replacement while upping the game when it comes to the build. Nonetheless, if you're just looking for a durable and reliable set of axles for your 05 and newer Tacoma, then this is it. Install will be a three out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, so I would recommend tackling this if you do have some experience to do it, and it should only take you roughly four hours to get the job done, two hours on either side. Now, speaking of the install, one of our customers here will show you a step-by-step -step process on how to get the job done. So that wraps it up for me. Let's go ahead and get into the install. All right, welcome everybody. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you how we can replace the CV axle on a second generation Tacoma. That's 2005 to 2000. 15. So let's get started by uh, showing all the tools that we're going to need. Okay, so here are a few of the basic tools that you're going to want to have. Uh, first off, as far as safety goes, you're going to want some safety glasses and some gloves. Probably some gloves uh, because uh, protecting your knuckles and also if you're replacing a broken CV joint, most likely it's because it failed and there's going to be a lot of grease. So gloves are definitely uh, helpful. And then um, you're going to want a metric socket set um, because we're working on a Japanese vehicle, so metric is the sizes. We're going to need a 21 millimeter for the wheels, uh, lug nuts, at least on my truck. It may be different on yours. And then uh, deep sockets, I would say it's going to be easier if you have a 19 and a 17 millimeter as a deep socket. You might be able to do it with the regular ones, but it might be easier with these. Um, you're also going to want a pair of pliers, just a regular pair like that, and then maybe some vice grip pliers as well. Um, not necessarily required, but could make life easier for you. And then the most important socket you're going to need is this big one, this 35 millimeter, and that's for the axle nut to loosen that axle nut up. And that's going to be where you're going to need your breaker bar, and also probably to release the knuckle from the rotor assembly is you're gonna need that breaker bar. And uh, it's not required, but what's gonna make your life a lot easier is if you have an impact wrench. I have my cordless impact wrench right here, and that's gonna make my life easier, especially for breaking that axle nut loose. And then um, we're gonna need a flathead screwdriver uh, or a cold chisel, a thin cold chisel. And we're gonna need a 17 and a 19 millimeter wrench. Uh, there may be more required, but we'll talk about those later as we go on. And then eat and or a uh, rubber mallet and or a regular hammer. And so that's pretty much it for tools for now. If there's any additional ones, we'll go over them. Oh, and most important, one of the most important ones is a torque wrench. Now, the axle nut does need to be torqued it's back down to, I think it's 178 foot pounds. We'll go over that later, but so you're going to need one that goes to at least 200 uh, for this uh, task to get it torqued back down correctly when you're done. Okay, so the next step is going to be to jack up the vehicle. So on Tacomas, on these second gen Tacomas, there's a spot right here, right under the front bumper, this spot right here. You can set your jack on that and it will uh, it's a good jacking point for that. So let's get started with that. Uh, don't pay attention to this front differential. That's another issue I have to fix that's not part of this video. So if you don't have a um, cordless or a 
air ratchet impact wrench. Uh, you'll probably want to loosen your lug nuts right now on your tire, but since I have an impact wrench, I should be able to do that with it off the ground. So let's go ahead and get this jacked up. You'll see the spot where I'm going. Move your jack into position. That's not gonna work. Okay, so now would be a good time. Um, if you don't have an impact wrench or an air ratchet uh, wrench, you wanna make sure that you loosen your lug nuts up before you lift it off the ground, just so you can actually loosen them and not just spin the tire. But I do have an impact wrench, so I'm just gonna lift the vehicle. Now there is a spot in the front that is easy to lift from, but I had to end up lifting it from back here because of a different issue right now, but you see this um, cross member right here, part of the frame, is a good jacking point as well. So before I start doing anything though, I wanna make sure I get some jack stands under here as well. So I'm gonna put some jack stands right here and on the other side as well. Now that there are jack stand here and there, uh, I'm going to leave the vehicle on the jack and those jack stands will act as a safety. Now you can lower the vehicle onto the jack stands, but I prefer to do it this way. And then also once I take the tire off, I usually lay the tire under the vehicle as just some extra safety. So do whatever you feel most comfortable with and don't do anything if you're not comfortable with it. Okay, so now I'm gonna start taking the lug nuts off the tire and a magnetic tool tray like this one is gonna be really helpful to keep all your parts organized. Uh, a larger one as well, but uh, just for the lug nuts, I'm gonna use this. So let's go ahead and start by taking the lug nuts off. That's a 21 millimeter socket, and it's usually good if you use a deep socket, it grabs the lug nut more, so a deep socket is best to take these off. So let's go ahead and take these off. Impact wrench takes them right off. And we can take the wheel off, kind of just hit it, and it comes off. Now, if it doesn't come right off like that, um, usually if you hit the bottom, with like a sledgehammer or something, uh, the weight from that should be able to get it off. And so like I said before, extra safety of what I like to do is kind of slide the tire right under the vehicle. Uh, just give yourself a little extra safety. Okay, for the next step, we're gonna disconnect the tie rod end from the rest of the steering assembly here. And so you'll notice there's a cotter pin here in this castle nut. So what we wanna do is we wanna take our pliers and bend it so that way the cotter pin is able to slide out, straighten out these parts at the back as much as you can, and then grab it by the front and you can pull it out. And usually see if I hit it like that a little, it gives it a little more, and we'll wanna make sure to save this cotter pin, especially if you plan on reusing uh, the tie rod. All right, so next we wanna take off this castle nut, and that's gonna be a 22 millimeter socket. and just leave it on there a little bit for when we uh, separate the ball joint here. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna be working on is getting this uh, outer tie rod separated from uh, the rest of the assembly here. So I'm gonna be taking this castle nut off right here and you can use what's called a pickle fork to try to get under here and kind of pry down, but I usually find that I end up tearing the boot and end up having to replace the tie rod end. So what I'm gonna try to use instead today is a tie rod end puller. So basically, this end will slide under here and then I'll tighten this down and it will kind of force it down and off. So, let's get started on that. Hopefully I can get it under there. So get it under the boot like that kind of. So that way it's there and then start to tighten this down so it sits on top of the other bolts threads and so this particular one I have um, uses a three-quarter socket so 
Then I put my three quarter socket on here and I start to tighten it down. Kind of fell off there a little bit, so I'll just readjust it, retighten it, make sure it's on there and continue tightening it. You can see it moving. So you can see, I think it's off now actually. It's, whoops. It's pushed it down and off. You can kind of give it a whack or two. This is where a hammer might come in handy. Whoops. And then once it out, it's out of the way, uh, if you're not doing anything else with a tie rod, you can just leave it off to the side. Okay, so another thing we're gonna do while we're right here is on the back of our rotor here, we see this line coming down to this little connector right here, and this is for your ABS. And so, there's a little tab there that you could pry off with a screwdriver. Mine's kind of already loose, so I can just pry it off like that. And that's what the connector looks like. You see on, sorry about that. This side, there's a little connector there, and that's kind of where you put your screwdriver, right there. And so then you can set you can pry up this other piece right here that is holding it in. If I can get it. You can kinda pry that up. And then you can release the cable completely and then you kinda just tuck that out of the way as well. Okay, so the next part we're gonna try to work on is uh, this right here. We're gonna try to disconnect this sway bar end link from the rest of our assembly here. That way it will make it easier for us to swing this whole rotor assembly out of the way. So you'll notice that on this end there's a nut and that's gonna be a 17 millimeter nut. And unfortunately we can't just do that because to look over here, it'll start spinning. So what you need to get is you're gonna want a set of vice grips to kind of go in there and then kind of see, kind of hold it as tight as you can. And you may have to mess around with it for a bit to get it to hold or find a pair of vice grips that will fit in here. But once you do, once you find that pair of vice grips or whatever, to hold that in place, you can use this and kind of break it loose. Let's see if I can't do that. Let me see if I have a better pair of vice grips. Okay, these ones might be too big. Ah, no, maybe not. These ones might be better actually. This big set of vice grips. That's too loose. It's finding that balance between what's tight enough to push down and not loose enough that it's gonna just not work. Okay, so now we've got that pretty well held and you see it broke loose. So undo that and make sure to keep track of all your um, nuts and bolts and what goes where. Just can undo that. And so once that is loosened, loosen up your vice grips and the sway bar end link just comes out 
And so now that's out of our way and the sway bar is disconnected from our assembly, so that's out of the way. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to removing the dust cover that's over the axle. And so the way you go about doing this is either a thin cold chisel or a uh, flat head screwdriver like this one here. Now, you do wanna be somewhat careful because you don't wanna dent it a little bit too much like I have before, but basically just wanna go in there and work your way around to pry it off. So once you get a little bit started, you kind of continue to work your way around. You start opening up more and more of it, and it will start to come off easier. And so this is a time where I'm noticing I'm not using the right tool for the job. See how long the screwdriver is. I'm not getting a lot of leverage because it's thin. So I'm gonna switch to a different screwdriver and continue instead of trying to use this improper tool. So as we can see this screwdriver, um, a lot shorter. It's gonna help me be able to pry at this a little better than the other one was. At least I think. Basically, you're just working your way around the dust cap here and working this cover off. I have done this a few times, so mine might come off easier than yours. It might be really stuck on there if it's been on there for a long time. This truck has about 200,000 miles. And there we go. And there's that off. Now you'll notice we have is the axle nut locking pin. So there is a cotter pin right here around this lock nut and so we want to take our pliers and we want to bend this cotter pin that way it can be pulled out and then we want to pull out the cotter pin like that. Then we want to set our cotter pin back aside in case but uh, your new CV axle should come with one and so there we have that and now we can go ahead and take this off now if you don't have an impact wrench this is probably what's going to be most difficult is you're going to have to find a way to stop the rotor from spinning while you break this nut loose now I've seen people do it where they put a lug nut back on one of the studs and they put a jack stand under it and kind of use that but I find that that usually just levers the truck up but if you have it on jack stands that might differ so it all depends on what your setup is and how you're going about it for me though if you do have an impact wrench that is going to be what's easiest so it can break it or alternatively if you keep your truck on the ground first, you take the dust cover off, if you're able to do so, you could do it while the truck is still on the ground. But just loosen it then, because you don't want uh, the axle to be falling out while your truck's still on the ground. So I'm gonna take my 35 millimeter socket, and my, and my impact wrench breaks that right free. Okay, so now we have our this is the end of our axle, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it out. Actually, we're not yet, because we need to disconnect this rotor assembly, so that way we can freely move it. So let's do that. So now you'll notice these bolts right here, we're gonna uh, loosen both these nuts, uh, bolts on either side of the knuckle, and those are both uh, 19 millimeter bolts, so let's get started. 
So I'll go on my first 19 millimeter bolt right here. Get the, break it free, and then we'll also break free this second 19 millimeter bolt. And you'll see that what that does for us is it allows us to move this rotor assembly freely. Okay, so you'll notice that now that we've removed the two 19 millimeter bolts that were connecting uh, the steering knuckle to the rest of our rotor assembly, that we can now freely move this about. Now we don't want to move it too much, put stress on our brake lines or anything, so we do want to be somewhat cautious, but this will give us the room that we need to push out our old CV axle. See that? Kind of just push it out. And mine is pretty broken, so it kind of just falls out. Now, you won't have it this easy. You'll see that mine is um, broken. There's another piece back in here, back farther there, that we're going to take a look at and see how to remove that. But uh, yours won't just pull out like that, but you will be able to push it back and get the front part up. So let's move on to removing the back part that connects to the differential. Okay, so now that you've removed the front part, your CV axle, unless it's as broken as mine, will still be connected um, to this part. But this part goes into the differential. And so here's another tool that I forgot to mention we'd be using today, is a pry bar. And we're going to be prying this out from the differential. Um, there is a circlet that is holding uh, the CV joint into the differential. So that's going to be what you're going to be pushing against. So uh, let me get the camera set up a little better so you can see a little bit more what I'm talking about. So you see this is where it connects into the differential. This is the differential right here. And you'll see this little space here. And uh, that's where we're going to be prying against. So you want to get some sort of pry bar in here and kind of pry that away. Uh, you don't want to use too much force. Uh, you don't want to damage anything inside the differential, but you can use uh, some force, so. Okay, so now we have our pry bar in here. We can kind of pry against it. Actually, before I do this, um, I need to put a catch can below here because some differential fluid uh, may leak out. So that's something we need to do. Also, this skid plate, depending on what bar you're using, uh, it's kind of interfering with my prying. So we're also going to take off this uh, skid plate. Uh, okay, so now that I have my socket extractor on there. Oops. Head and that one comes right off. I don't have many bolts on this skid plate because this truck does have 200,000 miles. So there's one more on the other side and that will be that. Okay, and so now moving this skid plate and then making sure that I have an oil or a catch can. Making sure that we have a catch can beneath so that way any differential fluid that leaks out will be caught in the catch can and not end up on your garage floor. So with that skid plate removed, you can more easily pry at the differential. You may have to try a variety of bars to see which one fits best. I'm actually going to try the pickle fork. That seems to give me a lot of leverage. Get behind there. Try. Just trying to 
loosen it and get it out of there. And I think it's coming now. Yep, yep. see the differential fluid start coming out. It's a good sign that you're almost there. And there is the other end. And so now you can prepare to get ready to install the new one. Okay, so now with the, out of the differential, you can see more of what you're fighting against is this little clip right here inside this outer ring. And so that's also going to be fighting you to put it in. So when you go to put it in, you kind of have to try to fit it in. If it's not going, back it out, turn it a little bit, and keep doing that until you get it in. We'll get to that in a minute because you don't want to put too much force on it. Otherwise, uh, it could cause more problems. So we want to make sure that um, it's better. So let's go ahead and compare the old part to the new part. And so you notice that it's a little beefier right here, so it's a little stronger. This one is upgraded uh, for more durability, I believe, is why I'm buying it is because I have a lift in my truck in the extreme angles, so that's what that, and here is our axle nut that it comes with. It comes with a brand new axle nut, and it also comes with the locking nut and the cotter pin. So, uh, nice touches, uh, good to make sure that we have those, and I'm going to get some calipers out and see if this inner shaft is any bigger and uh, we'll see how it is. Okay, so um, both of the parts are pretty much the same size, uh, so you want to make sure that your parts are the same size usually. Um, I do notice this part is a little bigger and I'm assuming that's part of the increased durability of this part that I got and so hopefully um, that helps with uh, not breaking any more CV axles, especially don't want to be doing that out on the trail. Okay, so for our next step, we're going to want to take the end of our CV joint and this little circ clip right here, we're going to be fighting with it. So it's easier if you can kind of like hold it in place and kind of grease up this end with some uh, automotive grease, kind of hold it somewhat in place so we're not fighting it as much and then just kind of keep it that and then you just basically try to slide it in and this usually is a bit of a process oh, let me turn a little bit of just turning and finding where it fits because you shouldn't have to force it an extreme amount. It's important to get it perfectly parallel so that way it slides right in. That's what we're trying to do. feels like it's gonna go, but then it might not. That's what seems to happen to me quite a bit. there we go it is in so now that we have that in we can start working on reassembly okay so now what you want to do is you want to take this end and you want to take the rest of your rotor assembly and you want to fit this in through here and make sure that the splines line up you got to kind of get it even even as possible, see that's not going in, so I gotta line it up, take it out maybe, and reline it up a little bit. So it goes in like that. And there is that. 
And next, we can work on reattaching our sway bar end link. So to do that, you may have to push down on your control arm a bit there. Push that back through. And then find your bolt that you definitely didn't misplace. And then screw that back on. Tighten that bolt back down. So now that we've uh, put our nut back on, we wanna do the same thing we did when we were taking it off, just reverse. So what reinstalling it is. <laughs> um, so that's not, that's over it. Okay. So if I can get these vice grip grips to cooperate with me, you're gonna wanna hold this on the end again. like that, and then you can put your socket on the other end and tighten that down. There we go. So next step, we'll reattach the steering knuckle, which can be a bit tricky, so I'll help you guys with that too. All right, so my jack is a little um, not reaching, so I put this block of wood under here, and again, the, raising this knuckle up to get it closer. And what this is doing is just bringing it closer. That way you can thread this bolt in easier right here. So you just gotta get these two lined up. If you can't, now this is, it seems like it should be really simple, but it usually is not. Takes me a while usually to get them threaded. Okay, so there's that one, I believe. Get our 19 millimeter socket on. See, yep, I thought it was threaded and it isn't. So, this is the part I struggle with the most putting this back together. Okay, there's one in. Find the second one. This is why it's a good idea to have all your parts organized so you're not just running around looking for each and every one of them every time. So you may have to adjust this as well. So it's a good idea to keep this a little bit loose. Loosen that one up a little. That way you can still move this one a little, because yeah, I can see this needs to go this way. And then get that one started. And then we'll get out our torque wrench and torque them down. Okay, so now we have our torque spec for these. I looked it up. It is 118 foot-pounds. So we're gonna take our torque wrench, we're gonna set it to 118, we're gonna lock it, and we're gonna take these bolts. So I don't want the tire to be spinning like that. Okay, so to reconnect, our tie rod end, you want to take it and you want to put it up through the hole, same way we took it out. And you want to take our bolt, our castle nut, and we want to just put it on like that. And then we can take our twenty-two millimeter socket. and we can tighten it down. I have an impact wrench in this case. Just wanna tighten it down so, 
Not that much. And then we want to leave a little space right here. You see how there's openings here? We want to leave one uh, spot open so that way we can slide our cotter pin through. And usually it's okay, that's just bending it. But. So we want to take our cotter pin. to start to slide it through and you can take a hammer tap gently down to help it the rest of the way through and then once one side is through you can take a pair of pliers and you can kind of bend the sides out to the side so that way the cotter pin isn't gonna pull itself out by any bumps or anything just to be safe and there, your tie rod end is reattached. So let's move on to the axle nut. Okay, so now we want to put on our axle nut here. So kind of start to thread that on. This is included with the CV joint. So you don't have to reuse your old one, which is nice. It's always nice to replace the hardware when you're doing something like this. And then, You can tighten it down most of the way using either your ratchet or, in my case, a back wrench. Getting it pretty tight, but uh, we will torque it down as well. So then, after you've gotten it pretty tight, what you think is close, um, to torque it down, uh, it does need to be on the ground. So we're going to put this on after we torque it down. So let's put the wheel back on and set it on the ground and then torque this bolt down. So if you did jack up your lower control arm, now would be a good time to release that. Kind of let everything settle. And one more thing before um, we put the wheel back on, we do want to make sure to remember to reattach our ABS sensor that we disconnected at first. Good thing I saw that. Because you could do it with the wheel off, probably, but it's much easier just to do it like this. And you push it in, and then you'll be good, connected. And you can run this cable back up to the top here where we disconnected it from. Put it back in that little uh, channel spot. Just to kind of keep it where it's supposed to be. Okay, so now to torque the wheel down, I mean, the axle nut down. We're going to put the wheel back on first and then set the truck on the ground. So, it is important to note that if you have a stock Toyota Tacoma tire, you should be fine. Uh, you just take off the center cap off the wheel. Um, but if you don't, you may have to figure a way, out a way to torque the axle nut down while the truck is on the ground. Because this allows access. Okay, so I'm gonna put my wheel back on, line it up, get at least one lug nut started. Just kind of hold it on there. And then you can start to put the other ones on. Make sure that. If you have an impact wrench or not, you always start the lug nuts by hand. That way you don't risk cross threading them or anything like that. It's always best to start them by hand. Okay, there's that. And then we're going to take our 21 millimeter socket and get those on there tighter. You also always want to tighten down uh, 
lug nuts in kind of a star crisscross pattern, not, not all in a circle. Okay, that's good enough to be lowering the truck down, so let's lower the truck. Make sure that you get your jack stands out of the way and anything else that's out of the way. Actually, I see I need to move a jack stand over there. So with all your jack stands out of the way, you can go ahead and slowly let the truck down onto its own weight. And once it's on its own weight, that's good. Then we can take our 35 millimeter uh, socket and then the torque spec for this is 173 foot-pounds of torque. So you're going to need a torque wrench that goes to at least 200. So there's 170, 1, 2, 3. And lock it. Now we're going to put it right on the axle nut. Actually, might need an extension for this. Got my extension. And there it's torqued down. So now, the next step is to take our lock nut and cotter pin and put those on. Take this locking nut and place it so that way. Um, you can still slide this cotter pin in, and then you can kind of slide the pin in. Probably be a little difficult, but again, using a hammer to help kind of guide along. And then we're going to do the same thing we did with the tie rod end. Is I want to take these ends and uh, with a pair of pliers and fold them out so that way they can't move on us and pull out on their own. And then the next step is to take our dust cap and we want to fit that back on and tap it in with a hammer. It's probably best to use a rubber mallet for this. Basically, just want to go all the way around until you can see that it's seated properly around. And finally, you have a center cap, reinstall your center cap. And then also one important thing to note, if a substantial amount of differential fluid did leak out when you were pulled out your CV axle, you want to make sure that you replenish your differential fluid as well. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And then we also want to make sure that um, once the wheel's back on the ground, we also, one more thing we want to torque down is our lug nuts. And so I usually torque those down to around 100 or not between 90 and 100 foot pounds is a safe number for that. And then again, you want to go in a star pattern that one's good, that one's good, that one's good, that one's good, and that one's good. So now, we are done. So that is going to wrap it up for my review and the install of the front CV axle shafts fitting all 2005 and newer Toyota Tacomas. More videos and products just like this, remember to always keep it right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.